Everybody and welcome back to another episode of Sally's Speed Shop. We're not in the shop today. We are here in Charlotte, North Carolina with the one and only Clay Milliken. So I'm gonna give you an inside look into what it's like to run a top fuel team. Basically, these engines fire up once, idle for a little bit, do a burnout, make a pass, and then get a full rebuild in like a half hour to 45 minutes. It's pretty wild. So I just got in to the pits with Clay Milliken himself. So introduce yourself for those who don't know who you are. Clay Milliken, six time top fuel world champion, driver of the Parks Plus Summit Racing Jackson. Yeah, and I've never done that before. He's done that a few <laughs> times. But uh, he's gonna walk us through some of the crazy stuff that actually goes on with a top fuel car because people don't know how crazy these cars really are. You know, it's it's when I tell you all this stuff, it's not going to make any sense, but I want to give y'all some numbers, and you got to think about it a little bit. So Jacob, show them the back tires. Yeah. So where these tires are right here, to the front of the car, is how far? That's basically 30 feet. So everybody talks zero to 60. Well, you know, a Tesla, no, 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 no. This car goes zero to 100 in just the, twice the length of this car. First 30 feet. In 60 feet, we're going 100, 100 miles an hour. And we do that 60 feet in less than one second. This 0.8 is how they do it. So think about it this way. Zero to 100 miles an hour in less than one second. Zero to 200 in two seconds. And zero to 300 in barely over three seconds. And the really fun part, what makes me say stop on the loud pedal all the time, when you stomp on the loud pedal, we're talking four and a half G's right now. You think that's crazy? A couple hundred feet into the run, as the clutch starts to really apply on a really good run, this thing will go over six G's at 300 feet out. There's nothing on the planet, piston driven, that will accelerate like these things. I hear this a lot. Oh, you know, a, a jet fighter being catapulted, not even close. I've been very fortunate that I've rode with U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, so I know what that experience is like, too. So when I rode with those guys, incredible, best there is on the planet. When we left the runway and hit the afterburner, I promise you I was back there twiddling my thumbs. Yeah, you were bored. <laughs> now, when they turn and start doing maneuvers, that's a different G-force, but acceleration-wise, that's not even close. Yeah, from a dig, nothing touches this. Nothing touches. This is the fastest vehicle ever, or, sorry, quickest vehicle ever created by man yes, is right here. Grip. Grip. That's wild. Now you can go back, you know, in the 70s, there were some rocket powered dragsters, horribly unsafe. That's why they're not around anymore. And I don't know the numbers on them, but piston driven, there's nothing like it, nothing close to it. And this is my 25th year doing it. And it still gives me butterflies, it still excites me, and it gives me a permit grin. People That's like you're grinning all the time, win or lose. I get paid to drive a race car. I stomped on the loud pedal of 11 or 12,000 horsepower. How can you not smile? Zero to 100 in less than a second. Think about that. You've talked about G-forces when you launch, when you're at half track, and then when you actually hit, pull the chute and hit the brakes, what do you experience the opposite direction? So negative Gs are no fun. Those are the Gs that will hurt you. Going down the racetrack does not hurt your body because it's being pushed on. Negative Gs, when you open the parachutes on these things, according to how you open them, if you're still under power or not, but you're talking somewhere from four to 11 negative Gs. And the biggest name in the sport, Big Daddy Don Garlitz, basically stopped driving from detached retinas. We do not have muscles 
in our head for our eyeballs going this way. You gotta squint, right? You gotta squint. <laughs> if you imagine one of your buddies is gonna punch you in the shoulder and you squint and wait for it, that's what you do. When you hit that parachute handle, you just kind of tense up and punch you know it's coming. But our eyeballs will detach the retinas and them kind of negative G's. Negative G's are what hurts your plane itself. I'm in there going, please stop, come on, stop bouncing. You know, you do what you do. You know, it's sometimes more exciting at the finish line for me than the going. It's yeah. weird. It's no. truly a different ball game. And we'll walk you through all the details on what actually makes this car work. And uh, maybe even show you them rebuilding an engine. Uh, That'll be coming up. Yeah, but he's got to go get ready because he's about to make a lick in this thing and uh, stomp on that loud pedal. Absolutely. So thank you, Clay. This is my dad's first top fuel event since, since 1980. 1980, I went to the Gator Nationals in Gainesville, Florida. I remember Don Prudhomme was there. I think uh, Don Garlitz. And uh, been away for 43 years. I figured it's time to come back. <laughs> and we may or may not have starting line access. So yeah, it's gonna be way different than he remembers it. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this guy right here is about to use a torque wrench on a suction cup that he stands on and takes some measurements of the track. All of these guys right here on the track are out here taking measurements with a bunch of different devices to measure how much traction is out there, what the track temp is, and it's really fascinating just how much work goes into making these cars hook on the surface, put 11,000 horsepower to the ground, and accelerate to 300 miles an hour in three seconds. It's, it's a lot to make this all work. This is Pete Harrell from Real Good at Doing Stuff. And that was his first time experience in Nitro Trackside. What do you think? Oh, that close, yeah, that's just unreal. You, you can't, TV doesn't get that to you somehow. No, it's impossible to put that into words. It shakes every fiber of your being. You gotta be here to experience that. <laughs> Truly insane. What'd you yeah. think? I don't need to go to a chiropractor. I've been adjusted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's impossible to describe. I'm glad I was ducked down behind the wall. I took a knee and uh, because the motor was right beside, I mean, like if that motor came apart, we would have died. <laughs> <laughs> there is a good chance of that. You need to stand up and experience all of it though. It's uh, uh it's wild. Yeah, we'll see about that. Really, really good. So here's Clay about to make his third qualifying run of the event. And you're getting to stand between two top fuel cars that are about to do a burnout. This is more like unreal. <laughs> rebuild it because that is one of the coolest things here at Top Fuel is that they rebuild the engine between rounds and I don't mean they just kind of freshen it up slightly they do a full-blown rebuild in the pits and uh, it's super cool to watch these guys and girls who work on these cars know what they're doing and they do a fantastic job of getting these things turned around and ready for the next round there comes the dragster they're gonna push it back into the pits here and then immediately tear the engine apart in this thing. I mean, while it's still hot, they're gonna be wearing gloves. You see the guy right there pushing the engine, he's wearing gloves. Um, they're gonna tear this thing down before it even has a chance to even start pulling off. But they're already pulling body panels off as they're pushing it. It's pretty amazing to watch. 
It's a well-oiled machine going on here. See, I'm tearing into this thing, not wasting any time getting things apart. Put it up on the quick deck. Pulling the carbon fiber belly pan off. And now there's a cylinder head station on each side of the vehicle. One guy takes one off, this guy takes this one off. This girl does the clutches and uh, she's going to start pulling that apart so she can get the clutches out and uh, inspect them and put a fresh set in. of this thing taken apart. Now they're gonna get all the rest of the pistons and rods taken out. She's checking all the clutches, rebuilding them. You got one guy on each side of the vehicle rebuilding a cylinder head completely. So they take them all the way apart. And uh, it's pretty amazing how much is going on here. And these guys know this stuff so well, they don't even have to think about it. Then you got one guy rebuilding the blower over here. So it's pretty phenomenal how much effort goes into this. It's been, what, five minutes? It's already taken apart? Yeah. <laughs> you get one guy on bottom end duty. They're under the car, taking everything apart on the bottom end, and then you got these guys pulling them out the top and uh, throwing a fresh set in. Pretty ridiculous. You guys see that right? A dingle ball hone is good enough for 11,000 horsepower, which is awesome. So sometimes there's a certain cylinder that cannot just be honed and they'll end up replacing the liner. So he's pulling a couple liners and they're replacing those so they have a good cylinder wall finish. Over here. <laughs> you don't want to drink this. No. So Clay's over here while they're rebuilding the engine, mixing up nitro for the next round because all the drivers seem to mix their own nitro. So all it is is the team wants us to get out of their way. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Gives you something to do. Gives you something to do and stay out of their way. But basically we get, nitro comes at 100% nitro. According to rules, we can only run 90%. So we're cutting that. The stuff you see me in this speaker right here is just methanol. Okay. So we're cutting the 100% nitro down to what the crew chief wants. In our case, we're somewhere around the 88 area depth. So what is special about nitromethane that makes it so much better than regular gasoline? So nitro is an oxygen bearing fuel. So it brings oxygen in the motor. And you actually have more power with gasoline than you do nitro. But if you tried to put as much gasoline in the engine as we put in there, it won't run. Because the, the stoichiometric measure is like almost one to one with nitro, right? It's very close to that. Because gasoline is like 14.7 yeah. parts air yeah. to one part gasoline. Yeah. You're going almost one to one. Almost one to one. And you're cramming like 80 PSI of boost in the, in the little bit of air you have too. Right. So. so the fuel's bringing the power 
and it's some weird stuff, you know. Very safe until you compress it. Compress it is. And it becomes volatile. Yeah. And that's why you see explosions when things go wrong. Yep. Exactly. It's pretty fascinating though. It so really is. Nitro it's is. Power. Yeah, nitro is the stuff that makes all this work. So it's pretty phenomenal. He's gonna be over there mixing his fuel up while they finish putting the engine back together. They got the sleeves put in and now they're working on dropping all the pistons and rods in. They got the new clutch back on and uh, pretty soon they'll have the blower sitting back on top and this thing dialed in and ready for the next round of qualifying. So this under here, you see that giant pipe? It's like a two and a half inch pipe. Runs all the way back to the motor. That's what the fuel travels down. So Clay's gonna top the thing off with a fresh load of nitro and uh, get ready for next round. What size fuel tank is this? 17 gallons. 17 gallons, and how much will you use from now to when you are done with the next run? About 14. 14, so that's warm up, burnout, and run? Uh, counting the warm up, it'll be about 19. My goodness. Always, everybody always says 20, but it's... So top fuel isn't exactly cheap, because nitro is kind of expensive. I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think nitro right now is $47 a gallon. Oof. <laughs> so Clay's gonna finish topping it off. They're uh, working on getting the engine put back together on the top end, and then they'll be doing a warm up, so they got this thing ready for the next round. So they're about to fire the motor for the first time since the rebuild, and uh, warm it up. engine rebuild on a top fuel car looks like between rounds it's a pretty crazy experience clay and his team they got it pretty dialed in and uh excited to see how they run on round four
in the uh, basically the mobile command center of this whole deal with Clay Milliken himself. He's going to walk us through what it takes to make a top fuel car work. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff in here, but the heart of the, the car is this engine right here. And if you could tell me some of just the basic specs on the engine, and then we'll run through how crazy it is. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty mind-blowing to think these motors are limited to 500 cubic inches. And think about that real quick. We're talking 11, 12,000 horsepower, 500 cubic inches. Everything out here is the same. Four 187 bore, four and a half inch stroke. That's what they are. And essentially everybody here runs one or two of the blocks that are out here. You have Schumacher block, or you have a Allen Johnson block. Now, John Force makes his own. They can be bought, but they're parts will interchange in amongst all of them. What separates a lot of the teams that run quicker or slower starts with the camshaft. I just told you the engines are the same. They are, you know, but you can alter. Compression is one thing. You can alter camshaft is a big, big thing. And I've been working with comp cams my entire life of racing, basically. So we do a whole lot with those guys. And the real trick to winning these things is managing the power. We hear it all the time, you know, these things make more power than they can use. Don't really buy into that. There are times we do use all the power, but it's not on the starting line because that's probably impossible. But So we slip the clutch lead in the starting line and then apply it as it goes and you'll hear the engine RPM come down. That is the key and the trick. And for us, it's done a lot of ways. It may be done you know, with how we set the clutch up, how we run the timing map. But at the end of the day, it's, it's who manages the power application the best, typically turns on a wind light. And I'm really rambling here. You probably had questions and I just went on a rant. There. No, it's amazing because Clay is such a wealth of knowledge. And me and him were just talking about this too. There's no other person in Top Fuel sharing the stuff you're sharing with the audience and just being able to give that accessibility yeah. to top fuel to where there's knowledge about this stuff where the, these are billet hemi blocks like billet most people hemis. will never work on one yeah. ever and you're just showing all the secrets how it works the cylinder heads he's talking about like this is jewelry to most automotive oh. guys stuff they'll never see and clay lets you see it it's, it's beautiful stuff i mean the cnc work on these things is absolutely incredible and yeah, you can see it in the the actual combustion chamber, yeah. it's still got the, the machining lines in it. Probably not picked up on camera because it's such good machining, but. I mean, it is beautiful, you know. It, it is a shame how many of them I broke over the, the 25 years I've been doing this, but, uh, you know, the cylinder heads, a good example. We were just talking about the ports are all the same and all that, but what a lot of people may not know, and, and again, if they're watching on my channel, they've seen this, but what's really crazy is these are basically injectors. So we're putting fuel right into the intake port. You could probably maybe see down yeah, there. Yeah, they're hiding behind the, the valve yep. there. So we're putting fuel in these things. There's two here in every cylinder. So we call those down nozzles. We have two, the same exact thing going in the intake manifold, basically right here. And then we have injectors above the supercharger as well. Jeez. So we are putting fuel in this thing absolute anywhere and everywhere we can pretty much. Well, I've heard, and nobody truly knows the flow rate completely, but it's over three gallons per second at wide open yeah, throttle. It's, it's crazy. Story. I don't even understand how you flow three gallons yeah. of fuel through anything. That explains your fuel line having to be two and a half inches in diameter. Yeah, exactly. Which is exactly. nuts. There is a cool video out there. Y'all don't leave this video and go to another one, but there's a cool video of one cylinder being run. Everybody's watching. Yeah, it's at the NHRA uh, Museum, I think, yeah. in Pomona. Fuel's just, yeah. you know, and, and especially on, on your channel here, you know, I get a lot of people like, oh man, you know, you drop cylinders, you need to, you know, put electronic fuel injection on there. There's not an electric fuel injector or several of them large enough to flow what we're putting in here. Yeah, it can't keep up. You can't keep up. And then the amount of uh, battery power you would have to have for that is crazy. And you just have, you know, electronic fuel injectors stacked everywhere. Yeah. And it's not legal. So it's amazing to see this stuff. And like people, I think, assume top fuel engines are a lot more complicated than they are. They're really like, there are people running similar things to this on the street at this point. You know, as far as the actual engine, it's obviously your fuel is different, yep. but it's a billet aluminum block, 
billet cylinder heads, aluminum rods, yep. and then it's got a forged piston, and then you're just cramming a ton of boost through it through a screw blower. Tonically, it's not a screw blower, not a lot. Oh, it's not. It's a root style. It's board. a roots blower, okay. 1471. We could go really fast if they'd let us put a screw blower yeah. on this thing, no doubt about it. The only thing difference, you know, in this and, and some of the guys, you know, you see on Drag Week or whatever, or Street Outlaws, to be honest with you, some of those guys run a water block. Mm. These have no no cooling, none whatsoever. We run so much fuel in it, that kind of is what keeps the engine cool to a, to a degree, you know. There, you know, there's a Noonan block out yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of guys are running Noonan running water blocks. Because they, they have water blocks available. And these things, we need it to be all there. Yeah, as strong as possible. As strong as possible. Because you will, you will window things. Yes. <laughs> and not only that, I mean, we're starting to see, you know, we're, we're starting to see maybe start to exceed the limits of even what is currently available because these things are starting to pull the main studs right out of the block. Wow. Which means the crank is trying to get out. Jeez. And so the, the trend lately has been to turn exactly the way old 426 Hemi was back in the day, you know, two bolts going this way and bolts going through the side of the block. Well, that's what these things have always been. Now we're doing four bolt mains, and so you got two studs going up on each side of the crank and, and bolts going in the side. But even still, they're trying to pull the cranks out of them. They'll pull the studs out. It's really frustrating. You can make a really good run and all the bearings look great. Everything looks happy. And then, you know, Austin will be doing the bottom end. He's like, gotta change it. You know, cause when he went to torque up a main, it didn't tighten, it just pulls mm. out, you know. So the cranks are definitely being pushed on now. And so it's not an easy fix because, you know, you're limited as to what we can do. The only way that's going to get fixed is you know, figure out a, a different way to bolt it in, or NHRA is going to have to allow a change how the blocks are made, and you probably don't see that happen. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Oh, there's a manifold. You were talking yeah. about the injectors in it. So we'll sneak over and take a look at where the injectors come in. Yep. You so you see, got, yep. and then you have a, what is, what is this sensor doing? So that's a sensor of boost pressure. Oh, boost in, pressure, intake, okay. Intake pressure. Man, yeah. So that's what the uh, roots blower bolts to the top of yep. and then crams a bunch of air down in the engine in that through that hole. hole. Yeah, that little hole. hole. And that's mandated as well. What The size of that okay. is mandated. And uh, we're just talking about boost pressure. So this is called a flow meter. That's how we measure how much fuel is going into the engine. And it's the funniest thing. This thing is what, like $1,200, $1,400 part, something like that, John? There's just a little fan blade inside there as the fuel goes by it spins this blade and, and it, it gives you a so it's like what measures your speed on a boat <laughs> kind of <laughs> very similar yeah. yeah that's pretty funny but yeah that's that's amazing and then the one of the craziest parts to me about top fuel is you get a piston and rod obviously this one's seen better days a little bit yep but this one piston and rod is responsible for approximately 1500 horsepower yeah one yeah. this it's what board you say 4.187. 4.187 with a four and a half inch stroke. Not a crazy setup. There are people with much bigger engines on the street. There's actually, you know, engines double the size out there. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're heavy, they're beefy. You know, uh, this one has a little scuff obviously. And hardly any compression. So these things are, most of the cars out here are somewhere between six and a half to like 6.8 wow. static compression. But then you're cramming like 80, 60, 80 60 pounds, 60 pounds, 60, 60, 60, 60 pounds of 60 boost. 60 pounds of boost. But again, with the magic mix, which is called nitromethane. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's uh, what makes it work. That's the magic for sure. Well, it's truly amazing. And uh, what's the lifespan on one of these engines? Well, uh, I mean, crankshaft, we typically get eight to 12 runs. If you don't hurt it, obviously, you know. Uh, the connecting rods actually are about 10 to 15 runs. Pistons, we don't keep a run count on because they will tell you. Pretty simple, you know, that, that piston's bad. <laughs> There's a lot of measurements and checks we do for that. If it sinks it, if the rings are tight, the piston can look good and still be bad. So Yeah, because it'll actually squish the piston yes, and, and, actually, and collapse the ring lands. And it actually squishes the rod. So everything gets shorter everything gets from smaller. the cylinder pressure. Cylinder pressure is so high, it compresses it. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys understand that concept. 
just hearing it. But this piston and rod will get shorter, like actually get shorter every single run that it is in the car. And they have a group of people that measures all of them, comes in, you measure every single one after every single run, you see if it's intolerance, if it can be run again, or if it's junk. And then, you know, the hard part for the guy that, that this is his job doing the rods and pistons, is he has to measure if this rod, let's say, shortened two thousandths of an inch. He's now got to find, you know, seven brothers and sisters to go with it that are two thousandths of an inch shorter. Oh man! You know, so it's all with, equal. All equal. Wow. Same thing with the pistons. Now we have a tolerance. It's, it doesn't have to be zero, but same thing with the pistons. How much they dish? You know, you got to keep them grouped together because we change compression on these things according to the weather. But we will do it in you know three to five thousand increments with head gaskets. Compression is hugely important to a nitro engine. Man, there's a lot going on, in case you can't tell. And this is just a very shallow dive into it, arguably, but it's the general craziness of top fuel to where most people can understand what you're talking about. Well, I hope so. I'm not <laughs> smart enough to confuse anybody. <laughs> yeah, like if you're a car guy and you know what these terms are, just think of all that stuff just on steroids. Yeah. That's all it is. Exactly. And, you know, I shouldn't say this, but you know, we typically as car guys plan on putting our stuff together, driving it, having some fun with it. This car, you hit the throttle one time, you got to work on it. Yeah, so it's a rebuild yeah. every single run. So every single run. It warms up for 30 ish seconds, yep. and then you go start it, do a burnout. Basically a minute and a half. Back, back up, yep. make a run and it lives for a minute and a half, two minutes tops. Yeah. And then it's a full rebuild. full rebuild. And I mean a full rebuild, not just, hey, we just took it apart and barely put it back together. Like, no, you, you change everything. Everything, rods, pistons. Uh, Sometimes rod sleeves. Bearings, sleeves, uh, main bearings, clutch, supercharger, uh, tires, and, you know, <laughs> and that wonderful $47 a gallon nitromethane, you know, about 20 gallons worth of that. Yeah, so $1,000 in fuel in one yeah. run. Yeah. on average yeah uh, it's truly insanity and we complain about our car breaking after like a year of racing we're like oh it only lasted yeah. a year these yeah. guys their car lasts a minute and a half yeah <laughs> but it's also you know eight people here that that's what they do full time you yeah. know that's that's what they do now do they want me to go out there and tear it up no have they uh scrubbed me on the head from time to time because i got a little carried away with the throttle yeah maybe <laughs> i imagine it's hard not to get a little carried away yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome, Clay. I appreciate the information. No is there problem. is there one random fact about Top Fuel that you like to share more than any other? Uh, yes, actually there is, and we did not touch on this. Typical hot rod, 36 degrees of timing, right? 36, 38. I'm not sure about the LS stuff. I'm new to that world. Actually, I know nothing about that world, but 20s and 30s, let's just say, typical timing. Top Fuel engine is typically 50 to 60 degrees of timing. My goodness. Yeah. That's this, out there. Yeah, that's way on up yeah. there. That's amazing. That's wicked way up. Yeah, and, and what that's for is because nitro burns so slow, you've got to really start that process. So you got to start the explosion well before yeah. the piston's actually at TDC. Yep. That's Nitro's wild. Nitro's a very slow burn. Man. Which also is how it makes power. It has time to build. And know? because it's such a stable fuel, arguably, you need a ton of power. So, twin magnetos, do you know what these are putting out, amp-wise? 44 amps required by rules. If you look right there, you'll see it says MSD certified. You can make these these magnetos have more than 44 amps. Well, you could weld with them if you wanted to, probably. You can weld with them. If you took the skill plug wire at 8,000 RPM, you're talking about 88 amps. Jeez. You know, so, you could weld with them. So, you need a lot of spark to burn that fuel. A lot of spark. A lot, a lot of and spark. your spark plugs probably hate life. Actually, spark plugs are uh, pretty much standard. You know, really? Yeah, there's nothing special about the spark plug other than they're. But they get changed. Time. They get changed every oh, run. Because yeah. every I saw some on the when you had the the engine in where they were very melted. You know, yeah. the porcelain was gone. Like yeah, well, I mean, you see porcelain. Yeah, the gone porcelain's there. all gone on these. So a lot of times at night when y'all are watching these cars and you see some little sparks come out, it's porcelain. Okay. It's hot. Porcelain. It's melting the porcelain. It's melting the porcelain. Jeez, and mel or porcelain chipped, doesn't or melt very easy. from detonation, a little bit of detonation, chipped Okay. Them, whatever the case may be, but if you see some sparklers, and I'm not talking green stuff, just sparks, that's porcelain on the way out, the header. Yeah. That's wild.
Yeah, Top Fuel is another level. And I just want to give a huge thank you to this guy right here for making this level of drag racing a lot more accessible for normal people. I mean, most people never get to hear this stuff. They never get to look at this stuff. And uh, we appreciate you coming out yeah. and, and hanging out. We've done this before, but not to this this level of uh, info going out. Yeah, but it's- Here uh, you need one more YouTubers at that point. No, We're yeah, I was real. working at Hot Rod. He was uh, yeah, so not a YouTuber yet. Yeah, not so a YouTuber. The crazy thing is to be able to share this with people. And I really wanted to get nerdy with this. So sorry if this was too technical, but huge thank you to Clay for the access to all this. And huge thank you for watching. Be sure to go check out Clay's channel. He's doing a lot of stuff related to Top Fuel. And just, cool stuff in general he's got some cool projects Dentley is uh his son's dodge ram yep. he's got a dakota that has a, yep. like a gen 3 hemi, gen 3 hemi and a six -speed. he's got cool stuff so go check out clay's channel if you want to learn even more about top fuel but i want to give a huge thank you to you guys for watching this uh hopefully you stayed with us the whole time there was a lot to take in but i mean how could you not want to watch that car make a rip down the exactly. down the track it's amazing exactly. you get so. to see the inner workings thank you guys for watching yeah. i appreciate it and i highly recommend you guys actually come out to a top fuel race and experience it in person because you cannot accurately describe the way that car tingles the senses like so you can't i know we're trying to end this and I'm, I'm going to end with this my daddy always said trying to explain a nitro car is like trying to explain rock and roll music you gotta see it and let's hear it and you gotta feel it yeah for sure yeah it is sensory overload on every level yeah. but anyway please remember to hit that subscribe button it does a lot more for me than you know and i really appreciate it and uh drop a like let me know in the comments what you liked what you didn't like and i'll see you guys on the next one i am